You don't do anything Andre don't, don't want you to do. Even that big slam that he, when he slammed Hogan, he never told anyone if he was going to do it, if he lets Hogan slam him or not slam him. Hogan didn't even know. <laughs> Hogan didn't know. Oh, Hogan always contends that he didn't know he was going to win until he gets there. And Yeah, he, he didn't know. He told me that. He said, he said the, what happened was he got up there, but he says on the turn, when I had to turn his body over, is we heard his, he pulled his back muscle out. Mm. Uh, I traveled with Hogan for like two years. Two years, because he, uh, he was so big at that time. He was on the front page of Sports Illustrated as the most recognizable sports entertainer. That he, was, he was big back then. And he couldn't go to airports and he couldn't go here. And, and 9-11, no, that stuff never happened yet. So they weren't, they weren't cracking down so much. So he asked Vince, he told Vince that he wanted me with him everywhere, which I was privileged. But he says to me, I just want you to know, you're going to get a lot of heat. You're going to get a, have a lot of people mad at you. I, I use these terms, heat, like people in your audience won't understand. No, no, no. I'll, I'll tell you, everyone's going to, it's, it's, it's specifically a wrestling channel. Everyone will understand, I assure you. Yeah. They said, you're going to get a lot of heat. I said to Hogan, why? He goes, because you're going to be sitting up first class with me. And, they, and, the, and the agent's going to be in the back. Huh. And uh, you, you see Chief J. Strong go past me. I'm in first class with Hogan. And he passes by me. Uh, Mr. Lombardi. You see, Chief, that's how we talk, Chief. He made like, Mr. Lombardi, uh, you're riding a little bit of a gravy train, aren't you? He's like that. And Hogan goes, I told you. <laughs> it, it, it happened. But Hogan was always good to me. He was always a good guy. I have nothing bad to say about Hogan. Nothing bad. No, I'd, I'd, I'd never asked for anything back because I love Hogan. And to be honest, I always thought that he was a really, really good wrestler. A lot of other people say he wasn't, but I, th I thought he had tons of fire and I didn't say anyone sit down during his matches, so he must have been good. No, you, you know, I had this argument, not this discussion with a lot of people. They say, oh, well, Flair was a better a better wrestler than, than uh, Hulk Hogan. I said, I judge my wrestling by who drew more. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Not yeah. who did three more flips or who could do this and who could do that. Hogan could draw with a, with a broomstick. He could. He, he went in with Lanny Papa and sold out hmm. as a genius. You know, I couldn't believe that. He was he was my first guest as well, Lanny Poffo, and he talked all about it. And he was he, he was yeah. you know hugely yeah. grateful for him. Yeah, it was a huge opportunity. I'm sure he did it because of Randy, you know, because Randy was up there. And it's another guy I respected tremendously, Randy. Oh yeah, let me tell you something, brother. How are you doing? Yeah. I, I mean, that's the dressing room talk. So that, that promo that you hear is not made up. As um, somebody who uh, worked with Vince McMahon or for Vince McMahon for 32 years, did you ever pick up on any of his strange habits or like peccadillos? Who's that? Uh, Vince McMahon. Pick up on his strange word peccadillos. I don't yeah, know uh, odd habits like uh, no one was allowed to sneeze around him. No one was allowed to smoke in the entire office building. He hated cigarettes. He was a very clean eater. He, he ate very clean, but he ate a lot. And he trained in the middle of late at night or early, early in the morning. The guy was in the greatest shape I've ever seen a man of his age. He's 75 now. Does he, uh, is he still hitting the gym still? I don't know. I'm not there no more. I'm not there. But they're still, still on good terms. I get residuals for life. D did you make more as a wrestler or did you make more as a producer? I probably did better as a producer because they implemented contracts. And if you wrestled on a Hogan card, you get more money than if you wrestled on a somebody low, like uh, Bret Hart. Or I'm not. I'm not knocking Bret because a lot. But what I'm saying is Hogan. If you're under the A, we were running three towns a night. You're either on the A, B, or C. If you're on the A, you're going to make a lot more money. If you're on B, you're going to make less money. If you're on C, they throw together a main event, Rick Rude against uh, somebody else. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just like the luck, the luck of the draw. We were. Um... When you were uh, hanging around Hogan for a couple of years, did you find yourself on the A shows more? Yes, all A shows, because I had to be with him. Mm. So I'm always no. He he would wrestle the main event, and I would always wrestle the opening match. 